Hello, friends in Christ all around our community on this 4th of July weekend. We are delighted to be able to to give thanks to God, to celebrate the, the gift of freedom that he gives to us. Certainly this weekend, we celebrate the freedom that we have as a country. That is an incredible blessing, and we should never take that for granted. But also, even more importantly, the freedoms that we have as Christians, the freedom that we have from sin and death and Satan, the freedom that we have to love freely. And so with freedom comes this responsibility to, to care for one another, and that, that means that uh, the last few weeks we've not uh, been able to meet in person, but we are looking forward to this upcoming week, the, the 11th and 12th of July, where we do plan on meeting in person again. Uh, I've got my, my mask ready. This is a, a new one. It says Grill Master. I think it's kind of cool. Hope that you have one as well, and uh, we will... We'll make use of those as a way of, of caring for one another. So as we gather virtually here and now, uh, we pray that God's Holy Spirit come upon you uh, to bless you and to help you rejoice fully and completely in the freedom that you have, the freedom to live now and to have life forever, all because of Jesus Christ. And so let's pray. Lord God, as we gather today in your name, even if it's virtually, we pray, Father, that you bless us individually and that you bless us definitively with your Holy Spirit as your word comes to us to strengthen us. We thank you for the identity that we have as children of God and the freedom that that means for us. Also, Lord, we pray for our country and all across this nation as, as people celebrate the gift of freedom. We also remember those who are struggling with illness, and we ask your blessing upon uh, those who care for those who are sick as well as those who are needing of your healing. We ask this, Jesus, in your strong name, giving you thanks and praise. Amen. Welcome to worship.
We make our beginning this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he. By ourselves, we are not righteous and cannot free ourselves. Our only hope is to be given Christ's righteousness and thereby be saved. Let us therefore confess our sins to God, our Heavenly Father. Merciful God, I confess to you and in the presence of my brothers and sisters that I daily sin much and deserve nothing but punishment. Not only am I by nature sinful and unclean, but also with St. Paul, I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? And Jesus said, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He offers full and free pardon for our sins and even your sinful condition. By his death and resurrection, he provides rest, not only from physical turmoil and emotional stress. In him, we find rest for the soul. Therefore, he forgives you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Old Testament reading today comes from Zechariah, chapter 9. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim, and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners from the waterless pit. Return to your fortress, you prisoners of hope. Even now, I announce that I will restore twice as much to you. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading today comes from Romans chapter 7. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good, as it is. It is no longer myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. For I know that good itself does not dwell in me, that is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself, in my mind, am a slave to God's law, but in my sinful nature, a slave to the law of sin. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel reading comes to us from Matthew chapter 11. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, Because you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. 
No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and to those whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the gospel of our Lord.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Welcome to the season of freedom on this 4th of July weekend. Again, we rejoice in the, in the great blessing that we have, the freedoms that we have as citizens of this great country. We thank God for this gift to us, uh, but with any gift also comes some responsibility. Now, incredibly, we are set free as Christians from things that we have no power over. We are set free from sin and death and Satan, and this is an incredible victory that we have all because of Jesus. Now this doesn't mean that we are free to go do whatever we wanna do, because you see, our thinking and our feeling oftentimes gets corrupted and, and contaminated with sin. Uh, the things that we want might not be things that actually give glory and honor to God. So whenever we become self-centered, whenever we want to be self-gratifying, that's actually when we find ourselves losing our freedom. That's when we find ourselves getting trapped in the whole cycle of sin. And so as we think about uh, this message that, that God has for us to, to rescue us and to give us true freedom, uh, I'd like to start out with a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you have come into this world, that you set aside the glory of heaven, and you actually limited yourself so that you could become one of us. That, Lord, you then fulfilled all of your righteous demands, that you led the perfect life, that you didn't fall for the temptation of sin, and that, Lord, you went to the cross to take our place, to pay the price for our disobedience, for our self-centeredness, for the times that we gratify ourselves, that we don't love you, that we love ourselves more. And we pray, Jesus, that as you set us free, that you actually fill us with even more love so that we may rejoice in our identity as children of God. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I've mentioned a couple times now that with freedom comes responsibility, and, and the, the flip side of the world is that freedom means that you can do whatever you want, that there are no responsibilities. But the world's view of that kind of freedom actually carries with it a, a huge consequence, the consequence of, again, the, the brokenness and the damage and even the death that comes as a result of sin. So let me share a little story. It's an old story about a little lamb that describes the, the consequences of doing whatever you think would be the great thing to do. So the story goes like this. A lamb and his mother passed by a pig pen each morning on the way out to pasture. Uh, watching the pigs wallow in the mud looked like so much fun for that little lamb. And one especially hot day, it could have been the 4th of July, right there in the middle of the summer, the lamb asked his mother, can I jump the fence and wallow in the mud? And his mother just simply said, no. No explanation. Mother knows best, right? Well, the little lamb couldn't help but ask the inevitable follow-up question. But why not? To which the mother said, sheep don't wallow. Well, the little lamb was not satisfied with that uh, blunt answer. After all, he had his desires. He had his wants. He knew that he wanted to go hang out with the pigs. He knew that, that that mud would be cool and it would be wonderful. Besides, his mother had no right to tell him what he could and couldn't do. And so as soon as she was out of sight, the little lamb ran back, jumped the fence, and happily sank into the deep, cool muck. Well, after a short time of bliss, his conscience got the better of him. Maybe his mom would get worried. And so perhaps he should clean up and return before he was missed. But now there's a problem. Now his thick wool was weighed down with heavy, sticky goo. His pleasure had become his prison. He stuck. Worse than that, the more he struggled, the more he fought 
the deeper he sank, the weaker he became. And so as he started to sink under the mud, with his little bleeds for help, the pigs, well, the pigs thought that was hilarious. And so they just laughed at his predicament. But fortunately, the kind old farmer heard his cry for help. And the farmer climbed into the pig pen, getting muddy himself, to lift the little lamb out of the mud, to then clean the lamb off and carry it back to the flock, to his mother. Well, the lamb dreaded his mother's rebuke, but she just said, little lamb, now you know why sheep don't wallow. This is like sin in our lives. It can be so inviting, so pleasurable, so easy to escape from, we think. We're just going to experiment. We're just going to dabble a little bit. But it's also so easy to get stuck in a deadly, and if not deadly, at least a damaging cycle of sin, a trap. In 1 Corinthians 10, St. Paul teaches us about a believer's freedom. He's quoting somebody else, and he says, I have the right to do anything, you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but not everything is constructive. And then the next verse, verse 24, is key. He says, no one should seek his own good, but rather the good of others. This is what Jesus meant when he said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. You know, think about this next time you want to engage in some self-centered, self-gratifying kind of behavior. It's not about you. It's about God's plan for you. The way that God intends for you to be a blessing, to be a help, to be a lover of other people to be one who is kind and considerate of others. And so you might think, okay, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Some people don't maybe seem to love themselves very much. But if that's the case, I would encourage you to pray for God to fill you with his love because you are worth so much, just like all those other people in your life, you're worth so much as a child of God. Of course, sometimes our neighbor, uh, whoever that might be, it could be anyone in, anyone in the world, sometimes our neighbor doesn't love us very much. Or actually, uh, our neighbor can become our enemy and actually mistreat us. Well, that doesn't change the great command. The great command is to love. And God's love comes to you whether we deserve it or not. In fact, we don't deserve it. But God loves us despite our disobedience, despite the way that we have not loved him, the way that we have mistreated him. Despite all that, God loves you with a perfect love. And his love is so perfect, it's so big, it can actually fill your heart and overflow to people who don't deserve it just like you and I don't. That's what's known as grace. There's a story about Terry Anderson, and this goes back some years. But if you know the story of Terry Anderson, if that name rings a bell, you know that it is quite remarkable because Terry Anderson was held hostage for seven years by Shiite Muslims. Even though he had done no wrong, even though he was completely innocent, his freedom was taken away from him, from people who didn't love him at all. And Anderson wrote about that time. He said that in those seven years, he constantly exercised, physically, mentally, even spiritually. He tried to stay in shape. This, of course, kept him busy and and helped him keep his sanity. But regardless of what he did, No matter how hard Terry Anderson tried, he remained a prisoner far from his homeland. We are equally helpless. 
when we fall into the trap of sinful behaviors. We're like that little lamb stuck in the mud. Uh, we can try to make ourselves feel better. We can try to occupy our mind and our time, but we cannot set ourselves free from sin. St. Paul said, I have the desire to do what is right, but I cannot carry it out. So Terry Anderson, his story continues. He says, quote, I wouldn't want to relive my experience, but I won't forget what it taught me. God comforted me, he guided me, and he helped me find a way past the anger and the bitterness so that I can live my life in joy and love. Let me repeat that. God helped me, he says, to find a way past the anger and bitterness. You know, those are justifiable, right? He's being mistreated. But to find a way past that so that I can, I can live my life with joy and love. I couldn't have survived without the Bible and without my faith. How many very politically and physically free people are there in this world, in this, in this country, in this state, in this community? How many very free people are actually totally trapped just by the sins of bitterness and anger? Only God can set us free from those. So often people will try to excuse their behavior by saying, but you don't know how badly I was hurt. And this is true. I cannot know somebody else's experience. This is why hearing of the experience of somebody like Terry Anderson, who certainly went through a, a horrific experience for seven years of being held hostage, has such power. Because by God's grace, Terry Anderson was free, even though he was still in captivity. Terry Anderson was free to love. He was free in his soul. He was free to forgive. This is because forgiveness and freedom actually aren't dependent upon us. Forgiveness and freedom really only come from God himself. They come from Jesus Christ hanging upon the cross to pay for sin. And not just, you know, some people's sins, but to pay for the sin of the entire world. This gift of grace comes to us in our baptism, where God takes a dirty little lamb stuck in the slime of sin and washes us clean. And he does it again and again and again. And again today, as you've heard the words of, of grace come to you, the words of forgiveness as we have confessed our sins, that's God's way of washing us clean and returning us, restoring us to the flock where there is safety, where there is peace and love and joy. So if you feel like you're being held hostage, whether it's to a, a, a sickness that you, you desperately want to be free from or an oppressive situation like we're going through right now uh, as a, a nation, as a world, or whether you are held hostage to a bad habit or a bad attitude. These things can seem hopeless. They can seem overwhelming. But then as St. Paul said, you know, who will deliver me from this body of death? But you're not trapped. God knows you. He loves you. He has compassion on you. And his promise is to never leave you nor forsake you. His promise is to rescue you. In fact, he's already carried out that rescue by sending his own dear son, Jesus Christ, the good shepherd who gathers you together as his little lamb cleanses you, restores you. 
God has overcome anything of this world. More importantly, he has set us free spiritually, eternally. Who will rescue me? St. Paul asked. And then he gives the answer. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's the answer. He is your rescuer. And he is the one that gives perfect freedom. May this God who set you free from sin and death, may he bless you with all the freedoms of the world. Freedom as a citizen of this great country, but even more importantly, the freedom to live with him. The freedom to live for him. The freedom to forgive. The freedom to love with God's love, the freedom to be at peace as part of God's family. God be with you and bless you. To him be the glory. Amen. Well, thank you, Pastor Zier, for this, that sermon. And, and now we have the opportunity to confess our Christian faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed. So I invite you at home, please join me as we confess our one Christian faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, Begotten, not made. Being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made. Who for us men, and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. And was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. At this point in the service, we have the opportunity to go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. And again, I invite you to join me from your homes. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we thank you so much for the many blessings that you have given us here in this country of freedom in America, and, and we pray that you continue to pour out your blessings upon our country, and, and we pray that you continue to, to turn the, the American people, our, our society, our culture, we pray that you turn us towards you, and that you continue to reveal who you are to us each and every day. Dear Lord, at this time, we, we lift up the many ministries that you have blessed here at St. Stephen's. And, and at this time, we lift up St. Stephen's Lutheran School, University Christian High School, Sean and Krista Trump, Trinity Hmong Lutheran and Pastor Zhang Yang. And dear Lord, at this time, we also lift up our confirmation students, our, our 7th and 8th graders, Lord. And we pray that you, you pour your Holy Spirit upon these ministries, that they may continue to grow and continue to make disciples for your kingdom here on earth. Dear Lord, our, our community, county, state, nation, and the world, that we have many different concerns on our hearts and our minds. How to deal with this coronavirus. How, how, to, how to deal with the social unrest happening in our culture. And, and dear Lord, we pray that you continue to work through these, these difficult times. We pray that you, you lead and guide our leaders, that they're able to make wise decisions, decisions that are pleasing to you. And we pray that, you also guide our church, uh, that, that we're able to spread your message in, in the midst of these difficult circumstances, and, and, that, and that we're able to gather in the, in the safest and best way possible, the, the, the way that's pleasing 
to you. And dear Lord, you, you're a God of comfort as well. And we pray that you pour out your comfort and peace upon um, Eileen Witt's family, Lord, as she has been called home to you this week. Be with her family and allow her family to cling to you, to, to cling to the hope that we have in the resurrection of the dead because of our Lord Jesus Christ, the, the, the one who conquered death on that Easter morning. Be with them, Lord, and, and, and allow uh, people in their lives, their neighbors, their family, their friends to, to, to point them to you, to point them to your promise that you've given us. Dear Lord, we have many people on our hearts and minds in need of your healing touch. And, and at this time, we lift up Lori Kirkendall, Lee Maynard, Kevin Huffman, Tammy Gilbert, Ann Graham, Barbara Lucas, Reverend Paul Wolferman, Judy Trainum, John Nain, Steve Davis, Carol Huffman, Kathy Kirby, Shirley Killian, Joyce Stammy, Benny and Bree, Robert Burgess, Tracy Miller, Mallory Sherrill, Bentley Miller, Kenny Knupp, David Day, Bob Watson, and Pat Walsh. Be with all of these, these individuals that are in need uh, of healing, Lord. And we pray that you work with the doctors and nurses that are working with them, that they may ultimately receive that healing touch, that, that healing touch that only comes from you. And, and dear Lord, we're, we're so thankful today for the many families that make up this wonderful congregation of St. Stephen's. And at this time, we lift up Ashley and, and Vicki Deal, Charlie and Linda Fritz, Kathy Hefner, John Link, and Michael and Pat Seal. Be with these families and be with all the families at St. Stephen's, Lord, that they may continue to make time for you and, 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 and make time to spend uh, uh, time in your word and, and hear what you have to say. And, and we pray that you, you use your powerful word to speak into their lives. And we, and we pray that you also pour out your Holy Spirit upon them, that they may grow in, in knowledge and grow in relationship with you each and every day. Dear Lord, we ask all of this in your Son's name, and, and right now we pray the prayer that our Savior has taught us together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to, to hear the blessing of our Lord to you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Cast my mind to come.